Hi, welcome to Select Obsession. We're all about creating electric things of value. Hopefully you've watched and enjoyed the first few videos in the series on converting your old Honda into an electric hub drive Honda. In this video, we're going to be discussing the two bikes that I've built over the last year, the original CT90 and the C200. I'm getting a lot of questions on why I'm even building these bikes. Well, electric vehicles are the future. And there's nothing more fun and cool than building an electric vintage Honda. Beyond that, they're virtually no maintenance. You just charge them overnight, ride them, and repeat. You're not tinkering with the bikes trying to get them running. Let's talk about my bikes. They're both vintage Hondas. They've both been converted to electric. They're on 17-inch wheels. They have 3,000 watt hub motors. They're 72 volts. And they have rear disc brakes. But beyond that, they're different bikes. The CT90 has a 35 amp hour battery and a cheaper controller. The C200 has a 30 amp hour battery and a nicer controller. That really affects the top speed and the range of the bikes. So let's answer the three biggest questions I get. What's the range? How long did they take to charge? And what's the top speed? So the range on these bikes. With the larger battery, you get an hour and a half to two hours out of the CT90. With the smaller battery and higher top speed, you get an hour to an hour and a half out of the C200. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of factors that affect the range. The temperature outside, how you're riding the bike, so that's a lot of accelerations will reduce that, or a high top speed will reduce that. The charge time. So this bike's about six and a half hours with a four amp charger, and this bike's about five to five and a half hours with a four amp charger. You can charge them overnight, and ride them the next day, and repeat. So the top speed. People always wonder, do these bikes go fast enough to get them on a real road? Well, the CT90, as you can see in this video, That's a respectable top speed. You can cruise this bike at 35 miles an hour, and if need be, get up to that 41. Now the bike that we're doing, I feel will have a higher top speed. We're gonna include a better controller and just better electronics overall. The C200, well, it has a higher top speed. Check out this video. I feel like that's a top speed that we're going to get with our build. It has that Saviton controller and just a smoother ride overall. The other big question I get is what's the cost of these bikes? Well, if you do a bare bones build with just the rear wheel and hub motor, the voltage reducer, the controller, a battery and a battery box, and the rear brake, you could come at about 1500 bucks. The challenge is to find a bike with good parts to build it up for a cheap price is probably gonna be a bit more. So you do unfortunately have to invest a bit more into these bikes to get handlebars, shocks, some of the plastic, and a few other parts you'll need. This bike cost me about 2,000 bucks, and this bike cost me about 1,700 bucks. I think our build's probably gonna be in the area of 2,100 bucks, but check out the parts list if you haven't checked it out already. It's got a full list of everything you're gonna need. Now the weight of the bikes. The C200 is 170 pounds, and the CT90 is 180 pounds. This is really due to the larger tires and the bigger battery. Now that we've gone over the basics of the bike, let's do a detailed walk around of each bike. Let's go over the C200 from front to back. So it's got a 1.4 by 17 front wheel. This is an old style front wheel. It allows you to use all of the brake parts from the donor bike. Moving up, we've got a new fender, new light and horn cover, a new head badge. These are all new, but old style. It has the LED light, the color display, the speedway bars, mirrors, 
the throttle that comes with the rear wheel and the controller, and motorcycle style brakes. This front brake runs through a new cable down to the old brake setup. The rear brake is hydraulic and it runs through this hydraulic line right here. The gas tank, it's been turned into a storage box and has the switch for the electrical system on the top. This switch runs through a contactor. It's a clean, easy setup. The battery box, it's got the 30 amp hour battery with the foot pegs mounted to it. It's all welded on the frame right here. The side covers are new, but old style. And the kickstand, this is all carryover parts. I've got the old foot pegs cleaned up. That's for the second person if you want one on the back. New shocks and that NBP rear hub motor. It's 3000 watts and 72 volts. A new seat and a new but old style rear light. The other big improvement on this bike is this four caliper motorcycle style disc brake. It's a huge improvement over the bicycle style that this hub comes spec for. There's an adapter that takes it from six hole bicycle to motorcycle style. This rotor is a lot stronger and the braking power overall is a lot better. On the bike we build, our bracket is actually going to go inboard on the swing arm. We're going to use the same adapter this bike has, but it's a cleaner setup. Let's check out under the seat on the C200. So, there's a lot of parts in this little area. It's got the contactor, which allows that ignition switch. And in there is that voltage reducer and the controller. A quick and dirty overview of the wiring on the C200. It goes from the battery through a fuse and actually splits off and goes to the positive side of the contactor and then the switch side of the contactor. When you flip this switch, it activates that contactor. From there, it goes to the controller and carries forward to all the accessories as the other bike did. Anything that needs to go to the back, like the turn signals and the brake lights, then goes back down into the rear light. Here's a more detailed view of the storage in the gas tank and the sequence to turn the bike on. So you flip this switch, hold the power button, and that nice color display comes on. Now this is a Bluetooth display, so if you want to make any adjustments to the parameters, you can do that through your phone. Turning the headlights on, you flip this switch, and of course if you pull the brakes, the brake light goes on. Let's do front to back on the CT90. Now remember, we are gonna be building a CT90, but it's gonna have a lot of improvements over this bike. Let's start with the front. So it's got a 1.8 by 17 front wheel. The issue with this wheel is the hub is a different style, which required those brake parts to be moved from the right side to the left side. Our solution is gonna be more like the C200, so it's a lot easier. Moving up, it's got the LED light, it has no cover here though. It does have the old head badge that I repurposed. Speedway style bars, mountain bike style brakes, and a black and white display. The throttle, again, it's the same throttle. It comes with that rear motor and the controller. The wiring is run on the outside right here, and we're actually gonna drill a hole and run it down this tube much cleaner on our build. It's got this large battery box for the 35 amp hour battery. Underneath this cover right here is a bunch of the electronics. So basically the plug to charge it and the plug from the battery to the controller to connect to the bike. It doesn't have a nice switch like the other bike. So you have to plug this together to activate the whole system. It's got a new seat, the original gas tank, original kickstand parts, original swing arm, and aftermarket shocks. It does have a new style rear light that has the turn indicators incorporated in them. It's got the NBP rear hub motor and that's 1.6 by 17. So as mentioned, this has that mountain bike style rear brake. It has that flimsy six bolt rotor 
and I had to weld a tab on to mount this caliper. It's not as powerful at all. Let's check out under the seat at the electronics. Now our setup is gonna be far cleaner than this. Here's the voltage reducer from 72 volts to 12 volts, and here's that cheap YF controller. I basically just stuff it in here and put some foam around it. We're gonna have a cool mounting bracket. So the wiring goes 72 volts from the battery through a fuse, up through that plug on the other side, into the controller, and then to this voltage reducer. From there it goes back down, through the frame, out right here, into the switches. The switches go to the appropriate accessory. For the tail lights, it goes back down through the frame, all the way to the tail light. It's pretty simple. To turn on the CT90, you have to plug in this plug right here, then come up to the bars and hold the power switch. It's that black and white display. It does have some changeable parameters, but you basically have to know the sequence of the buttons to make that happen. To do the lights, they're all in one here, so you just turn them on. Turn indicators, and horn. There's some details on my bikes. Thanks for checking them out. Now remember, this is a fun project, and these are great bikes to ride. Subscribe to the channel to keep these videos coming. And next up, we're gonna talk about the donor bike. We're gonna get into prepping the donor bike and doing some of the fabrication, so it should really be fun. Until next time, have a good day.